If you're watching this video, it is very likely you are looking for a simple solution to control ATEM switches. We have a solution for you. This is TCP link for ATEM. And with this box, you can connect with a TCP connection, use human readable text commands to control and read state back from ATEM switches. ATEM switches, they have a complex UDP based protocol, but we take all that away for you and make it easy. Now, today's video will also introduce that we can run all this on Blue Pill. And if you have been following our videos, you know that Blue Pill is our pet platform at the moment. We are putting a, a lot of effort into this little device. All our panels are also converted to Blue Pill, and we have a lot of power with the Linux platform that is inside the Blue Pill universe, and that allows us to create also TCP Link for ATEM as an application you can install on your Blue Pill. And we'll be looking at that in this video. Furthermore, that new application, it's called T, um, Device Core Link because it links you to device cores. And device cores is like more overall, all our connections to switches and cameras and routers and whatnot in the universe of AV and broadcast production. So it's actually all those things you can connect to, but in this video, we'll be looking at the ATEM switches. In this terminal window, which if I enter here, then I am basically connecting to this one. And the TCP link for ATEM has been set up to talk to my ATEM Mini on this network. So we can find the software control for the ATEM Mini. It is right here. And as I'm now clicking around inside the ATEM Mini, you can see there's a reflection in the terminal window of what settings has changed. See if I make a transition, if I press the transition buttons, you can see that there's all these reflections going on over here. I can also go the opposite way. For instance, if I select a source for a preview like I just did, this little line right here can now be replicated. And then if I change that value to four, notice what happens on my preview bus. I press enter here and it changes to four on the switcher. So as we would expect, I also want to show you that this would work on Windows because many of you guys are very likely on a Windows platform. On Windows, you simply start up PuTTY. And with that application, you type in the IP address of the device you want to connect to. That would be our TCP link for ATEM. Type in the port number we're using. Make sure it's the Telnet connection. And then a little trick that is necessary, you should go here and check those two checkboxes to make sure line endings are correctly sent over. Now, we have this connection apparently, and let's just click around. We can see this is changing. I have um, also the ability to do the opposite. So now I'll just type in program input video source colon zero equals one. Let's just see where are we right now. I think we were on camera number four. So as I press enter on this one, we should, oops, we should very much want to see it change over to camera one. And there we go. So yes, you can also do this on Windows. Of course you can. Actually, these two are synchronous. You see, we can have multiple connections. So both of them will, um, the, the changes I just did in party on Windows were reflected over here on the Mac connection, of course. I think you can do up to seven connections like that. But on the blue pill, it is basically limitless. So what I want to show you now is that I have a second terminal here. And with that one, I will connect to my blue pill. So to the TCP link for ATEM running on the blue pill. TCP link for ATEM on this one is running in the application called device, device call link. And uh, that's the one I'm connecting to right now on the IP address of the blue pill. So if I uh, wait a second, I need to go to the same port. So this is port 8899, 8899 over here is the one that I'm using. And now you'll see, basically, let's just clear these two terminals. So you'll see more or less the same commands coming out of this one. There's a slight difference. And that is documented on our wiki page. And th this is uh, also for good reason, because actually, I'm not on a mission on creating a complete and perfect integration of the original ATEM TCP link in Blue Pill, because we have so much, we have a, a much better command set for you that we want you to use in the future. So there is a legacy way and we're looking at the legacy implementation right now. You can see how they are similar. You see program input video source, program input video source. They are similar between these two, the original and the blue pill. So that is the uh, TCP link for ATEM implementation on the blue pill. 
what you're watching right now is basically our Wiki page. And uh, so go to wikiscarhoy.com, search up for TCP link for ATEM on Blue Pill, and you will find this page. And that is, that is uh, quite helpful to give you a few examples of how it works, which is also in the um, manual of TCP link for ATEM. There's instructions on how to set it up. We'll get back to that in a moment. And then finally, we have a number of commands that has been confirmed to work, and also those where there's a slight difference. But anytime you get to a slight difference, you um, consider if the right thing is to, to work on the legacy version of TCP link for ATIM, or rather move over to the more generic commands that, that we are using in device call link application. And that leads me to just state once again, you will be looking for this solution if you are after a drop-in replacement for this one, where you don't want to change the code that you might have already, but you still want to use this one because there's more model support and there's more parameters. For instance, we can connect to the Constellation series, which is different. Uh, it's very difficult on this one. Actually, some of these models cannot be connected to by TCP link for ATEM, but we can do that on the blue pill, no problem at all. So um, you, um, you may be looking for a solution to upgrade, basically and already having some code for your integration. In that case, then you're looking on this page. Otherwise, go to the other one. Basically, this is the TCP link for ATEM as it is right now. This little box is just connecting to the ATEM switcher and it gives you a TCP, one or more TCP interfaces. As we've just seen, where we connected to this one on both Putty and also with Netcat on the Mac. So if we look at how it works when you're on the blue pill, this is how it works inside the blue pill. So this big blue box here has two device cores talking to devices inside. Actually, I, I have uh, three device cores connected currently. One of them is the ATEM switcher. So just consider this would be this blue pill all together, basically. So there's the device core link application having the TCP link for ATEM mode inside of it. And with that one, as we have just seen, we have the same API to the clients. And then by following the red line, we are basically just going through this application and hitting a specific ATEM switcher because it turns out that we have multiple ATEM switches connected to the blue pill. What you're looking at right here is the blue pill web interface. This is Reactor and this is our go-to place for configuration and a lot of things that we're actually not dealing with today. So just disregard the left side of this UI and focus on the devices here. It's just the best view into which devices is the blue pill currently connected to. And we see there are an ATEM Mini and there's an ATEM 2ME Production Studio 4K. Both of them are connected to, but it's the ATEM Mini we are talking to because it has device ID number one, and this is what we have been using in our configuration, as we'll see in a moment. I also have a few other devices that we're connected to, and we can control that with the device call link on the, uh, but this is going to be demonstrated in a different video, so not in this one. Let's uh, go to the packages page because on this page, we can find the DC link TCP. That is the name of the application. So let's just click on that, disregard this one with the link servers and look for this one, TCP link for ATEM. It's enabled and it has device ID number one. This is how we know that it's talking to the first of the two ATEM switches. And that's all you basically can do in the original environment of TCP link for ATEM. But now I wanna show you what does it look like if you upgrade to the more generic command set that I'm promoting today as well. And this is uh, available on port 8898. How? Well, because apart from enabling TCP link for ATEM, the legacy format, I have also added what is called a link server. You can have multiple of those, but for the simplicity of this one, just focus on us having enabled another server on the port 8898, and this is enabled. This is also connecting to our device cores on the blue pill. So it's all on that, still a single device solution, even though all the arrows on my slide a moment ago looked a little bit more complex, but uh, it's all here. And as I'm now connecting to this one, you see that I'm also greeted and welcome. We are here and you, you can probably do something. And now I wanna show you what I need to do in this case to get the same effect, basically. I need to subscribe to the device core of the first ATEM switch. And it looks like this. You type in BMD ATEM slash one to indicate the first one, ID number one, that we wanna use this one. And when I do that, I see all the parameters of my ATEM switch are just thrown into the 
um, into the terminal here. And at this point, let's just clear out the, the, the two um, windows. I'm still connected to my original TCP link for ATEM. So if we pull up the ATEM software control here, and if I just change some things, you can see that, yes, on the original one, I have program input video source for ME row number one equal to two. Over here, it looks like this. It is prefixed with something called, or uh, with DC colon BMD atom slash one, and then program input video source slash one equals two. So there's some similarity, a pattern here. And if I press a few other things that you will see the same basically. So this over here in the right window, that's the new format. And the it's basically prefixed with this string. And the reason is it allows us to also talk to the other ATEM switcher. If we change the, the one for two, we are addressing the other ID of uh, the, the second switcher. And even changing this string allows us to work with other devices. Watch the other video if that's interesting to you. And all this sums up to a situation where device call link becomes a single entry point, single TCP connection, allowing you to reach multiple devices that the Skahoi blue pill is already connected to. So that's that's a very exciting aspect of this one. It's basically the TCP link for ATEM on speed, on you know trying to connect to everything and just give you that single connection. Same format. It's just making your life easy in terms of integration, having this uh, tool. Now, um, so my suggestion is for new ATEM integrations, you should use this format because that is what is far better aligned with the device course that we are currently working on, if you can do it. This is the legacy format, this is the new one. Let's just see what we can do on this new format here. So if we um, click around, we can see that all the changes that we can expect are also reflected over here. And just like we have um, um, done as well with the um, original TCP link for ATEM, we would have the same ability to now let's just let's let's focus instead of seeing all this. So I'll just clear the terminal here. And then let's just bring this one up because the way you do you, you interact with this is actually really easy. You uh, you bring this one up. And then you can basically copy this line. And then you can paste it in and just change the source for four to see that we could put camera four on program like that. So the, the way you work with it is very intuitive in this sense. But actually, if you want to know the complete command set, there is a command called list IO. And then you type that in, you also mention the device you want to see it for, like ATEM switcher number one. And there you basically see the full command set available to you. And now you could scroll a little bit around here. And one of the things that we can find, but otherwise wouldn't know about, is uh, I think the ability to send a cut command to the device. If I can find that, maybe it's under transition here. Yes, there we have it. So we can basically copy this one. Is there any explanation? It just says cut. That's kind of easy for us. OK, so basically the, the full command set is available right inside the application, which is really awesome. Now, uh, if I paste this in and I change the ME row here, like that. And then I think I need to put in an equal sign under one, but I'm basically sending a trigger. Now, notice what happens over here in the ATEM software control as I'm doing this. So let's just make this window smaller. We should see these two swap places, right? That's what a cut is, just a quick transition between one and four in this case. Let's try it. There you go. You had that cut coming from this simple command, which we looked up by looking at this long list of uh, commands. So um, this should illustrate to you that the new API, the new command set is far more um, it's it's far more powerful and it is also supported in line in the context of this application pretty well by showing you the complete command set of this one. And even because if we connect it to a different switcher, what you see right here is actually everything the A to Mini has to offer you. But if we um, I have another command that I can type in list. And list will give you all this, the, the devices that we are currently able to work with. So you see that other ATEM switcher, the ATEM 2ME Production Studio, that one. What if we um, subscribe to that one like this? OK, so now we're actually, we're actually bringing a second 
ATEM switcher into this application and I could connect to that switcher by just changing over the IP address here like this. Okay, so now I'm that second switcher and you see this is now integrated here. It's just called BMD ATEM slash two instead of slash one. And everything that one has to offer is available to me, including if I type in list IO and then I enter DCBMD ATEM slash two, then the command set that I see for the production studio 4K is actually slightly different. I think we have uh, more, we have some media stuff there. I think camera control was a new one. So in this way, it's even context sensitive to which device it is that you're controlling. Let's just quickly take a look at how you can get all this power tested out on your Blue Pill device. It, it, it doesn't have to be a Blue Pill. It can also be a Blue Pill um, panel, like we have these panels. And they are also able to host this on the side, so you can bring a lot of functionality into a single box. You will have to pay a license to do it. And I want you to go and read the, the web page for the device core uh, link application. It is uh, right here. And then the TCP link for ATEM that we have been dealing with in this video is also documented. There's a little notice here on licensing. And reach out to us if you want to test this out. There is a free 10-minute limited license. So for 10 minutes, you are able to do full operation of your ATEM switch. And then it's, it's going to bring you into quarantine mode again, so you can't do anything. But of course, you'll just reach out to us and we'll make sure you can get a license and there will be a cost of that because this is a product that we are selling and this substitute is a product that we are selling. So I hope that makes sense to you. Um, but let us know and we would be super happy to uh, work with you guys as um, uh, early adopters in this case. At the time of this video, this is something absolutely new that we are bringing out and we are looking for people who want to interact with us on fine tuning the last details of it. So inside of this one, uh, the application we're looking for is this one called DC Link TCP. So all you do basically is to go to available packages, search this one up, press the install button of it out here, and then you can do configuration that more or less looks like this and you should be good. In many cases, it's just about enable and enable, and then you have both interfaces on your blue pill.